Today I am going to show how we can secure the S3 service by using the best practices or the AWS recommended best practices that organizations are using these days. So let's start what are those practices that we can use in general to secure S3. So first way is block the public access so whenever you are using s3 uh, bucket uh, so you should try to avoid uh, giving public access to the buckets let's see how we can uh, block this access so this is the uh, this is the AWS account in which uh, I am showing the bucket that is my videos 22 and if I go to the properties uh, uh, the permissions uh, you can see that there is an option to block public access so uh, I have already blocked uh, public access but you can add it and click this uh, checkbox to make sure that uh, uh, bucket is not publicly accessible so just save changes and uh, bucket uh, will be saved from public access okay so that's one thing another is use server side or client side encryption so whenever you are uh, using the bucket and uploading objects so make sure that the objects are encrypted so there are uh, two types of encryption that are possible when you, when we are storing our data into the s3 bucket that is the uh, and uh, server side encryption that is by default uh, served by the AWS or maybe uh, we can also go for client side uh, encryption for enhanced security so let me show you how we can do achieve this so as of now uh, if anyone has access to the bucket uh, the normal read access they can download these objects but um, uh, one way is that if we can also encrypt these objects and um, uh, this encryption can be enabled from the uh, it's in the property section so default encryption uh, we should always enable it so this encryption settings we can enable from here that is server side encryption so AWS itself is encrypting all the objects that we are in, uh, uploading and when we are downloading just before the download it will decrypt and it will give us the original objects but we can use enhanced setting over here that is for example we can use this second option uh, this option is to uh, encrypt the objects by using the KMS keys and this is um, this is this adds more security and th that is because uh, if uh, you use second option then you first need to create the KMS key in the KMS service and then use that key and anyone who is trying to access this object should also have access to the KMS key and only then they can download the object or uh, decrypt that uh, decrypt the object and get it otherwise they can't so uh, you yeah, how it adds more security is also a detailed thing and I can come up in a, with another video to show that in detail how uh, we can use KMS customer managed keys to enhance security but just uh, to let you know that this is also an option uh, to explore so next option is to enforce encryption of data in transit so uh, we already know that yeah it's uh, easy to uh, it's easy and how we can encrypt and decrypt the object at rest so at rest means they are uh, store they are stored in the object th they are stored in the bucket and uh, 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 when they are stored they, they they are in the encrypted format and uh, anyone who has to download it they have to first decrypt and download it but another layer of security can be added when object uh, is being downloaded over the uh, over the network so suppose uh, some public uh, some someone is downloading the uh, object uh, anyone who has permission uh, maybe by using signed urls or maybe uh, if they are uh, 
programmatic user and they are downloading over network then uh, it's very much possible that uh, with the help of man in the middle attack they can see what's going on in the network they can read the packets and they can actually read the object so uh, in order to avoid this situation to secure the objects in transit we can uh, use the uh, you can, we can use this permission that will only allow the connection over https uh, for the download so anyone who is trying to download the object by using unsecure network that is http they will not be allowed only people who uh, are connecting to s3 by using over https that is uh, secure uh, they only will be allowed so how we can uh, provide this permission is we can do this by uh, by controlling the uh, uh, the bucket policies so let me go to the bucket policies i think it's in the permission section okay so you can see the bucket policy here we can uh, provide additional uh, additional json to uh, to make to add more security to the uh, bucket that is how the objects can be accessed and this is very uh, very much granular we can add lots of policies to make the objects more secure depending upon different use cases and conditions so let's just try to find out just some examples how we can achieve this so edit go to policy examples and over here you can see some bucket policies like how uh, these are the different different use cases in which you can apply these policies and sec further secure the object one very common use case is to uh, secure the uh, object request object get request based upon the specific ip addresses so you can just uh, uh, you can just uh, copy paste this policy into the bucket policy and then uh, you can mention the source ip so only the uh, only the requests that are coming from these IP addresses will be allowed to read uh, the objects otherwise not and uh, one thing that is to secure the object in transit we can use this permission where we can uh, use this option boolean condition that is secure transport so if this policy is used with secure transport then any connection that is not secure will be rejected uh, to download the object so just keep in mind that how we can secure the objects in uh, object download in transit uh, th this can be done with the help of these bucket policies so what other ways to secure s3 object lock so uh, s3 object lock is basically using the principle that is to uh, re write once and read many that is uh, it basically helps you to accidentally delete the objects or maybe if some malicious attacker is trying to just delete all your data in s3 bucket then s3 object lock can prevent this that is uh, it will not allow the objects to be deleted if the s3 object lock is enabled so this can be enabled from the property section I think yeah object lock so keep in mind that uh, if the bucket is already created then you cannot enable this so it has to be enabled at the time of creation of new bucket or there is an option to contact the customer support and uh, make it enable for the old buckets also so it's also it's helpful that uh, it will it it will avoid the accidental or malicious deletion of the data from the bucket another is the cross region replication for high availability so s3 uh, itself uh, creates the copy of data in the different availability zones but in if you want to add more resilience to or more availability to your object to protect it from the region fail failure then you can uh, yourself create the replication uh, cross region replication in another region and uh, then all of your data s3 data will be synced to another bucket in that region so for that you have to go to the management 
and there is a section that is replication rule in this replication rule you just have to create the replication rule and you have to provide the source bucket uh, or and a destination bucket uh, to which the data will be synced and uh, this bucket this de destination bucket should be in another region if you want to uh, support the region failover thing and the data will be synced so uh, it's easy in in case of failover you can uh, region failover you can start pointing to your request to the uh, different bucket that is in the another region that is safe region and that's why you get uh, high availability or you can say uh, more protection for your data another is cloud trail logs for lam with lambda integration so uh, cloud trail is a service where each and every api request is logged by default and for the s3 also we uh, we can see that whenever you we are using programmatic access or trying to make any request to the objects then all of these requests are actually logged there and what we can do is that we can simply trigger lambdas uh, from these logs just in case we find that some unusual activity is taking place maybe huge number of delete requests are taking place or uh, maybe some other malicious activity that you want to stop so you can check these logs to uh, get an understanding as what all requests are logged and how they are logged and then you can create uh, lambda integration to take actions based upon these logging uh, this will uh, to add more security the last one is to discover sensitive data by using amazon macy so there is a service in aws that's called amazon macy and you can just uh, use this service to identify what data you are storing maybe by mistake you are uh, storing some sensitive customer data basically passwords or uh, credit card numbers or some other sensitive data that you should not save or maybe it's uh, for also good for the gdpr compliance that you continue to use this service to see what your data is and in case there uh, it finds that uh, there is some uh, data that is some sensitive data in the s3 bucket then uh, you will easily get to know there are also couple of ways uh, other ways in which you can uh, make the buckets more and more secure but definitely it depends more and more on the use cases how much security you want to add but these are some of the uh, basic uh, uh, security features that uh, you should consider when you are using uh, the S3 buckets so uh, okay uh, that's all thank you